Fraser Focus, a fresh perspective beyond the bridge. Hello and welcome to another edition of Fraser Focus, bringing you stories that are often overlooked by the mainstream media. I'm Dean Atwell. And I'm Leah Bolton. We've got another amazing show for you guys this week. There is a local program that is fairly new to the Surrey area. It's a hero hockey program and there is a hip hop artist. He is not shy in the public. Then we head over for a health related segment. We're investigating the rise of animal therapy programs right here in the Fraser region. But to start off the show today, it's an overwhelming response to our segment from last week, the long-term care segment. We had another viewer step up to share their experience. My mother was one of uh, five sisters. She was 93 years old. She was very active and singing and participating in her group home. You know, she ended up having some issues and then eventually we had to put her into a care home. I just had a sense of this not being, it, it smelt of urine, it just, uh, it was a very old facility. It just really did not feel like a, like a very good place. She fairly quickly started to become confused. I'm talking within about a month or so. Her clothes that she was being put in were always rumpled, but in the beginning we were noticing her teeth were not well cleaned and there seemed to be sufficient staff, but we always found our mother kind of just left alone or they were putting her in bed all the time. What are some of the challenges that uh, people face when it comes to long-term care? It's really difficult to provide good care to seniors when you're trying to get them up in the morning, bathe them, feed them, toilet them. There just aren't enough hours in the day and we've been really pushing government hard to take care of this real lack of staff in our care facilities. Hi. <laughs> a recent study from the BC Seniors Advocate pointed to a number of issues. Uh, first of all, seniors were being disempowered. Uh, less than half of them were consulted about the medication that they're on. Uh, they weren't able to eat when they want. They weren't uh, generally being able to, to bathe as frequently as they wanted. And even toileting when they wanted uh, was very difficult for many. We knew that she had had a little bit of a pressure wound because we were informed of this, but it was something they said you know we've got it it's under control don't worry the day my mom died I had called in the morning and I was gonna come and visit with her my mother was in the wheelchair all alone in that room by herself and she was slumped over I sat down beside her and I took her hand and her hand was still warm and she was trying to squeeze my hand when we got her to the ER, they said, are you aware of the condition of your mom? And I was like, no, I'm not. Then I heard one saying, that wound is probing to the bone. My mom's legs and arms were just covered in bruises. I had told her we were gonna get her out of there. My friend and I each took her hand. I told her how sorry I was that I hadn't been able to help her. And, and make her death be a better one, and that she could let go. And she did, like that. For those individuals who are unable to care for themselves and find themselves in long-term care, it's incumbent on and you and me to speak out and to fight for these people that can't speak for themselves. Your mother yeah. just passed away, yeah. and you found out some information. Yeah, she um, fell out of bed because they didn't put the bars up and she broke her neck, she fractured her neck. My sister sent me pictures. My poor mom, 83 years old, black and blue, face to, to, to neck. And the, they sent in an x-ray machine, they x-rayed her head to see if she had a concussion, never bothered with her neck. A month later, she had to go into hospital for pneumonia and they x-rayed her and uh, found that she had her neck broken. The care in that facility was so poor, was, going nuts trying to find some other place for my mom but is it hard to get them in yes it oh. is the waiting lists are unbelievable wow because we're an aging population and there are no beds available i couldn't wish that upon anybody to die that way i i could not believe that human beings that are entrusted to take care of people Somehow, they're so indifferent. These are human beings being deprived of basic food, being deprived of just dignity, being kept clean. This was a slow and progressive and systematic allowing 
of a person to die. It's kind of like a passive euthanasia. And it can't just have happened to her. Well, here on Fraser Focus, we get to meet some amazing people with amazing stories, some of which, though, are heart-wrenching. And we want to thank you guys for sending those stories in. That was the second long-term care story that we did get. So thank you. You're watching Fraser Focus. We'll be right back.